Hello, everybody. Welcome to the training, learning, and development community. Thanks for joining us today. Um, another, this is like our third day in a row we've had a broadcast. Um, just like last week, three three a week is actually quite a bit. <laughs> so I'm a little bit, I'm I'm a little bit, uh, I'm somewhat exhausted from from all the activity. But at the same time, I do love it. And today, I love this topic that we're going to be talking about. Um, a tool again. Uh, yesterday we had talked with with. Oh no! Day before yesterday, we talked with Alan about using PowerPoint with and green screening, and today we're talking about Trello with Randy, Rubina, and Liz, who hopefully will be in in a little bit. We'll bring her up on screen when she's when she's available. But um, yeah, Trello is a tool that I've personally been familiar with for a while, and in fact, it I was just running down memory lane myself by going back into one of my old Trello logins and looking at my um, TLDC 16 Trello board. I used Trello to organize that first conference that um, the TLDC had ever produced. And who knows, maybe even later I'll show it to you guys because it, it's actually a pretty fun tool. And I know that we actually have a couple questions already in the uh, in the ask a question area, a couple questions from Kim. And I, hopefully we'll be able to um, provide the answers for you, Kim, for this one, because I do think that Trello is, a, is an extremely useful tool. And I feel honored to have these two guests up on screen with me, Randy and Rubina, who are currently Trello users. And hopefully they're going to do the bulk of the talking because I'm sure that they're a lot more proficient at um, at using Trello than I am. But one of the first things I want to go through is we had to figure out how to say K-A-N-B-A-N -A -A because that's what this style of, of, um, of productivity tool is. And so what was it again? Was it Kanban? Kanban, like Kanban. Kanban. Yeah, there you go. Oh, there's Kristen. She's um, Kanban. Yeah, I actually had to pull up a YouTube video to see how to pronounce it exactly. So with that, um, I think we were going to start with with Randy. You were going to talk about sort of the the, the origins of, of Trello and all of that? Definitely. Yeah, so um, I guess I'll use uh, Trello to kind of give a brief orientation to that. Um, let me go in here and I'll share my screen. Um, So I'm going to go into my Trello board, and I'm actually going to just create a new Trello board to do this. And I'll talk a little bit about boards and kind of the basic organization. So um, in here, I'm, I'm just inside here, I'm creating a board. And so a board is basically a workspace within Trello. And so there's kind of three different uh, three different kind of terms that are used a lot within Trello. And one is a board, another is a card and teams. So I'll kind of talk about that. And I'm gonna call this just TLDC um, board. And then I just click on create. And so I have three uh, of my 10 free boards left. So when you sign up for Trello you, as a, a free version, you get 10 free boards, basically 10 free workspaces. Um, so I create this board and when people talk about, Luis mentioned the, the Kanban method of project management. Um, basically, I think about it almost like you have uh, kind of three columns here. And so we'll, we'll do this here and we'll do what it's called a card. Um, and I'm gonna call this my to-do list. And I'll just add this here and that's my first column. And then my second one is basically work in progress. And that's my second one. And then basically completed is my third one. And so this is a basic Kanban board where you have your task on the left are gonna be the things you're planning, the things you're doing. And as you'll see when Urbina gets into talking about um, Trello for instructional design, there's like, Hers is like this blown up on a massive scale using like the Addy method. But it's at its base, like Kanban is the to-do list, works in progress and completed. And the whole idea is that you're trying to keep the works in progress to a minimal and so that you're not piling up on more than you, you can uh, manage um, and moving those to the completed. And so that's kind of the basics of Kanban as, as I see it. I don't know, Rubina, if you had anything else or Louise that you would add to that. I think it's um <clears throat> that's a pretty good overview of of the board itself and how to use it. And so, um, let me know in the chat: Have you ever used Trello or any other types of 
project management um, or, or similar development tools. Uh, I always like figuring out if people in ID are using it, are thinking about using it and or if they're using something else, I'd like to know what's out there. Um, but I heard about Trello, I think, um, the first time when I was doing remote instructional design and having to work with a virtual team um, all across the country. And so I'm here in, in Salt Lake City, Utah. We had some instructional designers over in um, Florida and in North Carolina and some other spots. And so it was really fascinating to pull us in all together from our various places and um, so useful in keeping track of the project, the timeline, all of those little pieces. And so I really, I really like it for that. Mm -hmm. And so definitely here, yeah, some people are using Trello, right? And um, a project, yeah, that's a good question, Kim. So she's asking, uh, you know, is it a project management tool? Um, how do you, how do you think about it? Um, um, either one of you, if you want to respond for that one, how do you think about Trello? Can I, let me, let me jump in real quick. You know, like as far as it, it definitely can be a project management tool, mm -hmm. like at a real basic level, it functions mm -hmm. like incredibly powerfully as a to-do list. And if I'm not mistaken, I think the origin of the Kanban system right it was from was it the toyota folks or it was came from japan mm -hmm. and it's yeah. one of the ways that they were able to like create um sort of a lot of efficiencies was by using this method and and in some ways it's kind of really similar to like you know just using post-it notes in some ways you know like in putting them up on a on a on, on a wall or a whiteboard or something and moving shifting stuff around and so um you know, the to-do list concept, very common use for Trello, but at the same time, um, I don't know. Let me show you guys real quick. I'm gonna I'm gonna sure, share my sure, screen. Please. I expect to do this, but I'm gonna show you like what I did like in 2016 when I was planning um that conference. So let's see, can you guys see that? Okay. This is kind of crazy. So hopefully there's nothing on here that's really gonna um be incriminating, but you could sort of see like, um, you know, the dates and then, um, you know, like we started out when Brent was, um, was, was, uh, was the conference MC, you could see how it started. And we had Allison Rossett, um, open up the first morning. We had Brian Fanzo as a keynote, um, and just all these different, you know, the schedule all together, it worked really, really well for that. Um, and it, it, it ended up being a, a great tool for that particular event. I do have to say that we ended up um, migrating over to Airtable because Airtable has some of the same features, plus we could integrate into databases. And so we, we um, stopped using um, Trello uh, for the events. But for that particular event, it was a great way to keep ourselves organized. So just even just straight lists. And mm -hmm. if you just need columns and lists, you can use it for that. And then of course the to-do list thing, we had different boards for that. We're saying it's in progress. We've, okay, the speaker has gotten mm -hmm. their information. And so now to the next step where like, you know, we have to make sure that they sign the agreement and we've received it. And then like the next step is like, okay, they've booked their flight and all that stuff. And so, um, so Trello worked really, really well that way. And I've also used it uh, to organize myself, even building the TLDC website way back when. I had a list of different elements that I wanted to be part of the website. And then I would just track my progress to make sure that, um, that I was getting, getting stuff done. Uh, I don't use Trello anymore, but back then this was, it was a great tool. I've moved on to other things like notion and, um, I use drafts a lot, but th that's for a, another broadcast, of course. Sure. Cool. Cool. Thank you. Um, Randy, do you want to um, go ahead and share your board first, and then I'll I'll do mine to finish it off, or vice versa? I think I think I was going to try to go first with the Addy model, right? Yeah, you want to jump in sure. there, and I'll, I'll I'll wrap up by kind of talking about how it applies to um, designing in higher ed. Okay, awesome, awesome. So here we go. So here's a. Can everybody see? Um, the boards, just let me know in the uh, chat if you're able to see the screen. Um, yeah. Awesome, thank you. So 
Here is a um, board that I developed based on a couple of different boards that I learned from. So I was working in a remote team and I learned from that board and how that was structured. And, um, and then after that, I looked on, into Trello specifically, they offer uh, templates. And so I looked at their templates and searched for instructional design um, um, examples and or anything based on any of the models like Addy or Sam or, or, or whatever else was out there. I found one that someone did develop uh, for Addy and I'll post that in the chat after I'm done. Um, and so I used that and then um, I saw how the cards were laid out. And then this is kind of a version 2.0 of that specific to how I use it. And so um, there, there, you'll see when Randy presents his, his is in a different format for a different audience and a different style. So my specific format, um, you know, I work for a government agency. I, I have a, a group of stakeholders um, um, that are also involved in my project and uh, give me, you know, all sorts of feedback and, and things that I have to do. So I am using it as my process manage management of how I'm developing and as the pro project management for the timeline so that they can also see what I'm doing and we're all on the same page. Um, so I invite uh, my stakeholders, my clients, anybody that's involved with the instructional design training course that I'm making at the time into that project. Um, I am probably the instructional designer, so it's just one instructional designer for this. Uh, for this is what I've developed for that. Um, we are going to add on, uh, but I'll talk to, about that later, um, how we structure this in, in maybe another talk. The first thing that I do uh, when I'm when I created this, I, I just gave some background information because a lot of our stakeholders just don't have a, a strong understanding uh, when they're coming to us for training. And so I ended up realizing I had so many repeat discussions about uh, the process and things like that. So I just kind of threw that up there and that just kind of reminds me to talk about it. And inside the card, you can put in whatever information that you want to put in. Um, I'm not sure why it's not showing it. Maybe it's not. Oh, there it is. Um, about the ADDI process, about instructional design, about anything on the background that you want to talk with your client and or stakeholder about that. Um, and then just kind of best practices here with course development. Um, I, I had that piece in there too. I pulled from materials and articles that I found online, whatever was useful for me, and I just embed them there. And when we have a new kickoff for a meeting and stuff like that, that's when I talk to our clients and stakeholders about that. And then this is just really for me and for them to kind of see where I'm at on these different cards. You'll see some of these different colors that are on there. These are the key for those colors. Um, I learned a lot of this stuff in the Trello training modules um, that they offer and they're there for free and you can go and see them and watch them and really learn a lot of cool things that you can do. Um, and so I use just, you know, a uh, red light, yellow light, green light method. Uh, red is I have some problem and we need to address it. Um, Orange is just, I'm working on it, it's in process. Paused, I'm paused for some reason and I'll explain why in the card and or green completed. Um, some other labels in here like blue, just if we're having a meeting and you, and you kind of see some of those in there too. Um, so it's for me personally, plus everybody else that's in on the project. So we're all at the same time. I always get that question, where are you at? What are you doing? um when can we see x y and z come here you can see all of that you can view all of that you can peek in have at it it's it's cool for that um other things that you can embed in your trello you can put in your emails into there you can put in google drive links into there um and and add those in so i found it very um responsive in the design and so that's why i like using it I went through all of the phases and then I've got analysis, design, course development, 
implementation and evaluation. And here's where we start our kickoff. And then at the bottom of all of these um, lists, I've got what it is that I'm working towards. And then these are the pieces that go in between. And basically that's essentially it um, for just, um, just a very broad overview. If I have to get more technical, and trust me, this can get way more technical, um, and some of these lists get long, uh, when I when I add more things to it, more discussions, more meetings, whatever. Um, but this is basically it. And I make sure that I have these approved uh, uh, points so that I can go forward in, in the project. Uh, I learned through trial and error that if I don't do that, that's usually when I get bounced back into scope creep and or um, into another part of the design uh, phases uh, that I don't want to be in at a certain point in time if it's already been approved and moved on. Um, does anybody have any questions before I move on or any thoughts about it? <clears throat> I'm, I'm impressed. Rubina, that, it looks fantastic. That is really, really useful. Wait, so did you base this on, on a pre-built template or was it a uh, structure? Yeah, there, there are a couple of links in here that I'll throw up. Um, one of these I've got uh, <clears throat> um, Robin Sargent. Uh, I, I've mentioned her before. Uh, she was the one I worked with in a, in a virtual space. And she talks about um, using Trello for project management in instructional design specifically. And so I really like that. Um, and then Simon Ives, I, I don't know who that is, but that is where I found, I'll post this right here. Um, that is where I found his version of an Addy template as well. And he did the same thing, A, D, D, I, E across the board, and then in between, the the little the little cards that went in between to structure what it is that he had to do within those phases and i just found that to be fascinating and and really structured and um i'm i'm using this now i'm actually testing this so i made this this summer um out of a lot of discussion after two or three projects in my in my current space and a lot of folks are very interested in knowing what it is we're doing when we're doing, how we're doing, why we're doing, and all of that. And um, it really helps towards getting everybody in on the same page at the same time. And so I'm finding it very useful um, in my space. Yeah, it seems like, I mean, especially since, you know, this was your idea to bring this up, it obviously must be a, a tool that has really affected your level of productivity and just being able to share your knowledge. Um, that is fantastic. I would like to hear like if, you know, if Kristen or, or Mary or Heidi, if you guys are using um, Trello in a similar way, I'm, I'm sort of curious because I, uh, I didn't realize that there were pre-built templates, you know, specific for, you know, instructional designers, like, you know, the one you, you had showed from Simon and, and, you know, even Robin Sargent talking about it, but um, that is, is, is very, very cool. Yeah. In here in Trello, um, <clears throat> Um, so I went to the to the house uh, icon and then they show uh, templates. They've got a bunch of different templates. And mm -hmm. so I was trying to, you know, I was thinking out loud and doing some research and trying to figure out what did it, you know, on the on, on the stakeholder side, they really wanted to see what we're doing and what our timeline is. And uh, especially of of uh, in the development stage, why things take so long um, and when we're going to finish. and not so much I, i'm really very very happy our deadlines are internally driven so i'm kind of um at the helm for when i decide when i'm going to move forward and how but they also want it to be defensible for me um and so this really helps a little bit with the cya process <laughs> of this is what i'm doing this is why i'm doing this is exactly where i'm at let me show you exactly where i'm at um, and, uh, and then they, they're comfortable, they agree, they're happy and, and then we just move on. It's been kind of fantastic. So I'm testing it out right now. 
um, on, on a real project. And just so you know, uh, this one is is right now like horrible. Like it's I, I'm probably at the bottom <laughs> of this thing. Uh, so you know, we we just have more things happening, and it's totally fine. You just add another card, you put it in there, you track your stuff. Uh, if you're if you want stuff for or being organized and task driven and and just keeping things in one place, that's me. I just I just love this for that. Otherwise, I'm gonna forget it. They're gonna forget it. We're all gonna forget it. We're gonna get pulled uh, onto a different project, or somebody's going on vacation, and then you come back and you're like, wait, what was I doing? It's all right there, um, which is really kind of fantastic uh, for me. I, I kind of I, I really like what Trello offers. Um, Ravina, I was just thinking that this would be really helpful too if, for instructional designers that are more on a freelance um, basis who are maybe going through the process and all of a sudden there's some changes from this, the schmies on like what they need to do and they're going back to like a previous phase and then you're able to say, yeah. well, this is going to change our rate or the price of the project because you're moving it back and now you can visually see that where you're at in that process. So um, yeah. I would think that would also be really helpful for freelancers. I've had that a lot. Um, I, I think it's just for everybody, anybody who's an instructional designer, mm -hmm. just whoever you're with, whoever whoever your client and your stakeholder is, um, whether it's internal or external or whatnot, um, they can always say, hey, that looks great. Can we add X, Y, and Z? And you're like, mm -hmm. yeah, if we do that, let me bring you back here. And then you use these as your talking points. Um, that's great, but we have a design document. That's where the, the scope was. Um, um, uh, that's where I developed the scope of the project and we all signed off on it. Um, you know, I gave you this document stating X, Y, and Z is going into the project. So we can add this, but then you kind of have to go through some of these steps again and just know that you're going to be doing that and then let them decide, do you want to do that or do you not want to do that? Uh, sometimes they say, yes, go ahead. It's in the best interest of the learner or we really need to add this into the project. Let's go ahead. Or, oh, gosh, I didn't realize that's going to push your time for all of these other parts and pieces. Mm, maybe we will not do it in this project. Maybe we'll tack it on to a next iteration of the course or or a different type of course or some other kind of invention uh, intervention uh, that you that you create. So uh, then I just could kind of say, you know, next we could just add it in their iteration. Um, and then just, you know, put a little note in when you close your board and maybe come back to it in another year, you check it out and you're like, oh yeah, we were thinking about doing that for that next one. Or, or these are the things that we missed that we need to add next time. Um, you could totally do that. And then a year later, this is still hanging around. You can go back to it and, um, and use it that way. Although I haven't had a year yet with this, so yeah. we'll see. <laughs> How, you know, how, how like how much do you really rely on this now? Is this something that you like open every day, and it's just become a part of your your good your, your question, good life? Question. So um, I I like to have the stuff in there, and then um, there are days where I don't touch it. But I think through the week, I wouldn't let more than a week pass before seeing this uh mm -hmm. i have you know i've got my email list i've got my calendar uh so there's other things i am using in my office for stuff day-to-day uh, -day things but i do come back to this quite often and then especially to just kind of um when i'm planning my next meeting with my SME or whatnot they know what i'm going to be talking about because they see that in there they know what to expect i have that in there you can put your agendas in there meeting notes whatever um, and house everything right here so it's centralized and uh, and everybody can access it. That's the best yeah. thing. Um, yeah. And then, you know, kind of, if, if you do it more than a week or two, you're gonna forget your little parts and pieces and then not put it in there. Um, so this may be a little bit more detailed than what you might use or what you might start with. Don't get daunted with it. Try it, see what works for you. Add some things, don't add some things. I mean. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. Hey, you guys, is it okay if I just, I want to go back to the Q and a and just make sure we answered, um, Kim had a couple questions in there. And also I want to bring up, um, this comment that Kristen made. Is that okay? Yeah, sure. Please. 
cool. So let's start with Kristen. She um, went through her boards and she just made this Trello board um, public, which is um, one that is that that is part of like a scrum training program oh, cool. that, that they built out. So you guys take a look at that and chat it. It looks very, very cool. And then also Kim was wanting to know just the very basics of that. And, and Kim, I know is, uses a bullet journal and um, how different is Trello from like just using a, a bullet journal. I'm hoping Kim that we kind of mm -hmm. answered your question. It's a really, really different sort of format. I think that a lot of it is either just straight lists or, you know, just tracking, um, tracking progress for a particular thing. So um, hopefully what we've gone through so far has given you a better understanding of, of exactly what Trello is for. And I know that since you're um, a writer and things like that, I'm not sure if like being able to track it in this way would be useful for you. But I know for me and my own just small projects, it's been really, really helpful. Mm -hmm. And then um, Kim had also asked, is, is Trello just for, just for teams? Would there be any b benefits to using it for a solopreneur? And I just say, yes, definitely. Um, yeah, yeah. It, there it, we go. <laughs> That's yeah, a good it, transition <laughs> to Randy. <laughs> right, right. And it is, it's super powerful for teams, but as a, I've used it just for myself. And then of course, you know, when, when I was producing the conference with Brent and stuff, you know, it was great to be able to share it um, with him and anybody else that that was working on on the event. So it can definitely um, just be beneficial for 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 both types. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So should we move on with Randy? Yeah. Yeah. Let's go ahead. OK. OK. I'll go ahead and um, share mine. So I initially came to Trello through a blog post I'm going to post in real quick that was from a, a teacher who um, was using Trello kind of to help organize her teaching. So I'm going to post that in here. Um, and that's how I initially came across it when I was teaching um, in higher ed. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And so when I started with, um, I am, let's see, my Trello, uh, um, I, was, I was setting up for courses um, in my um, classes that I was teaching. And so this, I guess it was in March when, you know, COVID hit and my university went to fully online. Um, we had a number of teachers, myself kind of included, who were kind of new to teaching online. And so what I did is I set up a Trello board and there was a number of resources in addition to the Trello board itself um, that were designed to help people understand basic features of the LMS and online teaching. And so what I set up is this is kind of um, just to help orientate teachers to how to design an online course and teach it. And so <clears throat> these were kind of the resources that I set up a number of just um, books that it was like, if, if you want to get you know, take it a little bit further. Here's some professional um, resources. And so I just have those. And like Ruby mentioned that one of the things that I think really makes uh, Trello powerful is you can add attachment. And so here I have an Amazon book link to the online teaching survival guide. And so, and here's just a little bit of my um, description of the book and maybe how it's helpful. So for me, this was just a, a way to set up um, a set of resources and then here's kind of like the checklist for planning the online course. And so um, again, this is for English language teachers. So it's, it's a specific audience in English language teachers who are new to online teaching. And I wanted to give this tool to help them figure out like, here are the different um, steps that you need to take in setting up your online course. Um, the last part is where I took a lot of behind the scenes in here. And that's like the, uh, online course standards and rubrics. So what I started doing is I went into um, the, <clears throat> sorry, the Quality Matters Higher Ed course review rubric. And I was actually getting some of those standards and then putting them um, in, in the description of like why you need to do these practices and setting up your online course. And the other one I used with the, the SUNY uh, they have an, a, a course quality review rubric that they use for describing like uh, what a quality online course means. So I use those two resources to kind of like behind the background in a lot of different Trello cards in terms of like how to plan and then how to set up your um, course. And um, we, we were using Blackboard as an LMS 
our learning management system. And so I had some specific things here that actually link to, uh, you know, uh, communication policies um, and then like setting up your discussion board. And then, you know, here would be a template that would go to a Google Doc and then they could see a template of like, here's how you could set up your discussion board. Um, and, and then again, the verbiage I had in here was copied basically directly from one of those course review rubrics on like, here's why you need to do this as a best practice. Um, so I had those kind of the pre-course setup, and then here's a little bit on synchronous training. We used uh, near, I started using Nearpod and some of my fellow teachers did. So there was resources on like how to integrate Nearpod with Zoom. And then if you want to use Pear Deck, then you could have use it with Zoom. And so here was some stuff specifically to synchronous teaching because that was obviously for teachers that would have been face to face. That was a new thing. Um, and then here was kind of just like the how to do the weekly modules. And so I kind of had this set of planning task um, in here, like what you should know before you begin planning course content. And so this was taken from not only those course rubrics, but different um, online teaching guides that I was using. Um, and then I put in here just like statements like from Quality Matters, the I'd say students and their instructors may be challenged by technology if a sudden. Uh, and so I, I gave them a little rationale on like how you, why you should consider this um, aspect of planning your online course. So it was kind of like building, making the checklist uh, or the uh, online rubric um, integrated into this Trello document so that um, people kind of had a set of standards guiding their, their online instruction. And then some of these are basic, like just how to use certain functions of the LMS. So this is using the journal function in Blackboard. And so I wanted to have some links in there where somebody could go to, uh, you, you know, I think this might go to a, a video um, on YouTube on like how to set up a Blackboard journal or like kind of like a, a sort of like a job aid. Um, and then once I got into the week, it would be like, all right, week one, here's the, you know, first week courses, uh, first week course tasks that you might consider doing. And so I had this set up as kind of a template of like, here's your learning outcomes, here's your task list, so that teachers can go in here and see like, if they're designing an online module and totally new to it, they can just copy and paste this straight from the Trello uh, card into their um, modules and then kind of design from there. And so I had that and then kind of a couple introductory activities and then kind of a weekly wrap up where it reminds them of the task and then the learning outcomes that they should have um, they should have been able to perform and those relate strict the learning outcome relates to the task up here. So kind of that task alignment and learning outcome kind of a reminder of that. Um, and then there's ongoing evaluation and classroom assessment. So that was something that was you know, obviously teachers um, and educators are pretty familiar with, but I think when they moved on the online space, that was something that was completely new. Um, and then kind of a final course wrap up. So this was kind of just, again, a, a resource I set up. It was kind of a just-in-time resource so that teachers completely new to online um, teaching would be like, here's kind of a landing spot. Here's some additional resources if you need it. Um, so I didn't, I didn't get as uh, detail with the color coding, the visuals is Ruby's really nice board that she was showing. Um, but yeah, that's essentially what how I was using uh, Trello um, for this project. Oh, that's awesome. So did you like having it or did you have everything, this board complete before you presented it to, um, to uh, the trainers or to your audience? Um, I, I was creating it as I was teaching kind of in the spring and, um, just as I was kind of going through, I kind of wanted this checklist for myself because I kept going back and looking like, you know, what, what are the things that I'm doing and what are also the best practices and are those aligning? And so it was also just a way to kind of like get me to a place where I felt like I was delivering a more quality online, um, class and then I could share that with others. So yeah, it was kind of like developing through the spring and then the summer. And so by fall, I had something that was a little more concrete and worked out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause it seems like every column is sort of like a to-do list type of thing. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, and, and 
you know, and, and there are advantages to seeing it all at once versus, you know, and also, or just seeing it as, as it's being built. But um, I think that's really, really impressive. Um, that's very, very cool, Randy. But I think some teachers found it a little overwhelming and <laughs> I don't know how, how useful. So I think it was just because of everything that going on, but uh, mm -hmm. I, you know, I did want to like, I think it was a very resource based set of um, a very tool driven set of resources that was presented us through the university when the, the COVID um, switch to remote teaching happened. And I think this was something that I was trying to be like, okay, like let's move past that to like, why are you doing this? And then what are some uh, principles behind it? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I wonder if there's a way to hide a column, like, you know, and then so that you can, and then bring it up like later on. I, I don't recall if that's uh if that's even a possibility, but it seems like that could be a, um, you know, that, that could be helpful. Mm -hmm. Just be able not like say at the beginning of, you know, like a semester or something, it's like only have one column and then, you know, during week two, then display another column and sort of go through it that way so that mm -hmm. everybody that, um, you know, that the board is shared to, um, you know, they're not hit by all of it all at once. Definitely. Yeah. And um, I guess the last thing I would say is just like, in addition to this, like within my own classes, I'll see if I can find one of a decent one of those. Um, the other way I used it at the university, this was like a collaboration board. So I um, basically what I did is I launched or like set up every week in the course and this was a, um, a total of 10 weeks so it was the summer course this summer and um, I, I made a, a, a set of cards for each week of the semester and then all the teachers that were within our um, in our uh, cohort were teaching similar courses but they were using a, a, a shared set of content and so um, what I did is I kind of set it up so that we had a, a set of boards that we could just collaborate. And so it was mainly used as a collaboration tool, um, hence kind of the, the name for this, this group of collaboration uh, teachers. And so we had all these different courses in our language program, writing, grammar, content, reading, and one person in the content would have the main set of resources. And then in the language program, like the writing, grammar, and reading teacher would use that set of resources for their, um, you know, teaching the language. So, um, you know, when, it, when we were face to face, like it would just be like a water cooler conversation of like, hey, Louise is using uh, this really great article. So I'm going to try to, you know, integrate it into my writing class. Um, and obviously that is hard to happen even in face to face. So when we went online, it was like, here's one way you can kind of share like all the articles you're doing. So that in this one, it was just primarily like a collaborative tool mostly. Yeah, that's awesome. You know, it, it's, it's funny just watching all of this. I've have kind of forgotten how much I actually really love Trello because it, it can be so functional in so many ways. And, and there's a lot that you can do with it. This is great, you guys. Thanks for sharing. You know, Liz had um, sent me a message also uh, uh, about uh, that template page, Rubina. I think that did you um, did you post a link to that template page? Oops, you're on mute. Hello. Uh, thank you. <laughs> uh, do you mean the one that I created or the one that I found as a template? I, I posted the one that I found as a template in there. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, let's see. Yeah. Liz was asking, did Ruby show the templates? I heard her talking about it, but wasn't sure if she showed them. Uh, um, yeah, there's one here. Um, and then let me see if I could share that real quick and then I can, um, throw up here. Let's see. And then just real quick, you guys. So Liz actually is going to, um, she is going to come in and what's she going to be talking about? We're going to, uh, let's see, I have it back here. Oh yeah. Okay. So she has, um, 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 a Trello board, like where she's building out her website and then also any contract or project work that she has. And then also her job hunt. So I think that that would be a nice way to round things out. The okay. problem is, is I, I just found out, or I, you know, Crowdcast actually the shared window now takes up a seat on screen. And oh. so one of us will have to log off to be able to, um, to, to, to let Liz in, which is a new limitation. I, I could do it. that because I need to go top on him. Yeah. Here in a yeah second. No, Randy had, had a hard stop anyway. So mm -hmm. Randy, thanks. And just everybody on Monday, Randy's going to be um, doing an LMS playlist 
um, conversation with us. Hope you remember that, Randy. Yes, uh, I do. <laughs> this is a surprise. Um, we're going to be talking about um, Blackboard and Canvas on Monday. So, um, you guys, if you can, uh, join us jo join us on Monday, and we're going to be uh, talking about that particular tool. I'm kind of really interested to hear about that. And so, thanks for being here. And I'm going to go ahead and invite um, invite Liz in as soon as you're um, as soon as you're out. Thank all right. You. Yeah. Good to see you all. Cool. All right. Thanks, Randy. Right. Mm -hmm. I like how, right. I like how everybody's using it. Um, this is really cool to see. Yeah, you know, and it's it's just a, a really solid, I think, way of being able to organize yourself and then just share where where you're at with certain things with the rest of your team. Yeah. Um, I didn't realize, you know, I mean, mostly I was using it just to kind of track projects oh, and yeah, yeah. do that, but um, yeah, it's 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 it, it's it's really really powerful. So it sounds like it's something you're going to stick with for a while, Rubina. I think so. Yeah, testing it out yeah. now, and it seems to be working. And I I, I started right where you are, I and mean, I think we kind of all did organically, and then uh -huh. it just it just developed over time to where to where I got to something like what I built, and I really like it. Yeah. yeah. Nice. It is. Nice. Hi. Hey Liz, thanks for joining us. So Liz, why don't you just like introduce yourself a little bit new on the on 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 TLD cast as far as coming on screen. So tell us a little bit about yourself and then just, just get into what you uh, what you got. Yeah, so um first off, can you hear me? <laughs> the yeah. typical first question. Um so I uh let me first apologize actually because as is the way of 2020 um, we are having house windows installed throughout our house and that installation was delayed a day. So it's taking place today as well. So I'm sitting outside of a Starbucks. So there you go. You'll, you'll get to hear right. people drive by. So, um, <laughs> not what I planned, but 2020 isn't what anyone planned. Right. So yeah. you gotta kind of flow with it. Um, so I am originally from Brooklyn. I live in Austin, Texas. I've been here now for 14 years. Um, I have an undergrad uh, degree from Williams College and then got my MBA from Cornell and post that degree really focused on talent development. I spent most of my time in performance management, learning and development and employee engagement. Um, but most recently I stumbled into customer success, uh, which was not a field I had ever heard of, frankly, prior to maybe four years ago. Um, so I, um, I was actually supporting a lot of talent management software uh, as a client success person. So I was still kind of getting to touch uh, on the talent development side of things, but COVID uh, had its way. Uh, and so I was laid off um, a couple months ago. And so I've decided to sort of take this time as a quote unquote sabbatical um, and reskill, upskill in some cases, and really focus my efforts back towards the talent development side of things. Um, so throughout all of those roles and through, um, you know, my time just kind of doing some contract work and working on my own, I've used a variety of different um, project management software. I, I use air quotes when I say that because I saw, I can't remember if it was Kim asked earlier, you know, I'm not a project manager, is this for me? Um, and I'm not a project manager either. I mean, I have managed projects, but the answer is yes, I think. Um, and I'm still very new compared to Ruby and Randy um, to Trello but I'm using it for, like Louise said, a few different things. So um, I will share um, an actually quick, quick shout out to my mom who's watching because she is the reason I am a list maker. <laughs> and that's why I like Trello. So let me quickly share my screen um, and share my Chrome tab. Uh, oh, I have all these awesome, uh, there we go all these awesome links that people shared. Um, so I'm actually gonna go back to my Trello um, board real quick. So um, I actually have a few different boards um, because I'm still very much playing around with this. Um, and so I had, at one point I was taking six different uh, ATD courses. And so my plan was to map out all the work I needed to do for all of those. Um, but then, you know, time just flew and I didn't actually get a chance to do that, but I liked this template a lot. And I think this was the work from home template. Um, so as we have all discovered, and actually I've been a remote worker now for four years, um, it's very different working from home than it is uh, working in an office off, off site, if you will. 
Um, and then when you have a partner or spouse who's also learning or, or rather working in your home, you know, it, the, the lines blend really <laughs> quite, quite a bit. So um, I think that this, <clears throat> excuse me, I think this could be really useful in terms of kind of mapping out, you know, what is the work that, that I have to do today? But like I said, I haven't adjusted this one, but things I liked about it were the different labels. I liked, um, uh, someone mentioned, Luis, that you had uh, sort of a, a rubric for the labels that you have over on the side. I think that would be really helpful. Um, I think probably um, for future use, I'm going to do the kind of have almost like a dashboard where things would be red, yellow, green. This one's doing fine. I'm not worried about this. Ooh, this yellow. Um, you know, if I don't spend more time on this, this could become an issue. And then red. Oh, gosh, it's past whatever the deadline is. Um, I do like that kind of uh, way of organizing things. But the other, so you've all probably been very familiar with the um, meme of, you know, clean all the things, do all the things. I, I tend to use that um, in, my, in my life. Um, so what I've started doing and what I really want to do um, more going forward, let, let's hope I, I get really into this, is I'm literally just writing a to-do list. So just the type, same kind of thing my mom would write on her little three by five pads. This woman is known globally for her three by five, three by five pads, you know, task one, and you just can hit enter. And it's so, it's so easy. And then you can drag them. That's what I really like in terms of ordering things. So I can say, you know, I'm going to do this on Thursday and just drag it over there. Um, yeah. And, you know, it, it you can do, you know, if you miss Monday, you can drag it again on, on Tuesday for home things where it's not, you don't necessarily have a customer or a client who has a due date. Um, you know, things get pushed a little bit, right? Back and forth, for instance, the window insulation, <laughs> that whole thing. Um, so I like it for kind of the home to-do list. Um, so back to Kim's original question, no need to be a project manager for me. Um, I see it is a really good way to organize lists. Um, but to, for my website, I'm really trying to map out what are the things I want to do week by week. So I created a new logo. So now I need to update the site with the logo. I will say, I love that Trello has some fun backgrounds. So I found an owl background um, because this website, um, I've called my sabbatical the owl project. And it's because I'm moving onward with learning. A little cheesy, but I, I am a little cheesy, so what can you do? Um, but so, you know, I wanted to make sure to note down, okay, now that I have a logo, I want to update the website with it in the appropriate spots. And then mapping out, when am I going to, you know, post the first blog? Okay, I want to do that next week, so I need to draft it this week. Same thing for the following week. Um, I have some ideas of maybe featuring some people in future blog, blog posts, so I need to kind of think through that. Who would be the people? What would be the right order? What would be the right topics? So um, more of almost like the iteration and brainstorming phase is where I am right now. But what I wanted to make sure to show y'all is I want to do a new board and um, <clears throat> excuse me, from templates, there are going to be more templates than you could ever you could ever want. Um, and to Randy's point, there's a great deal of ones around education. I mean, I um thankfully my five-year-old um actually is in person um so uh, i'm not in charge of his virtual learning <laughs> um because even though i have a background in teaching somehow i just can't teach my own kid um but I, and i've heard that from a lot of parents um but this homeschool trello uh template for instance i really i really like because of the way that it is very kind of color coordinated and it's it's taking a moment to do it but um there's, you know, it's fun. Like the kids would like to look at this um, and they would like to kind of follow through what are the things that they need to do. So obviously this is of a particular age, but um, you know, a kid can read, but um, there's just so many fun options there. And then um, on, if, if we go back to uh, the templates real quick, if there are particular soft, if there is particular software that you use, so for instance, if you use Jira, um, or um, I'm trying to think of what the other Atlassian uh, product is that I've used in the past, but um, Confluence, I think <clears throat> a lot of those companies actually create their own templates. So you can get things that 
are really similar looking um, to some other symptom symptoms <laughs> software that you might use. Um, so I, I like that a lot. Um, and then there's just I love the new on new employee onboarding uh, template that was shared. That's a, an area of my of great interest uh, for me is is employee onboarding. Um, but yeah, you can you can just make it as uh, personal to you as you want. Um, you can make it bare bones. It can be just, I mean, my to-do list, as you saw, was very, very straightforward. Nothing, nothing terribly exciting visually, um, but more helpful in terms of a week at a glance. I will say my, I have sort of two complaints, if you will. One is just that in some cases there are too many options. So if you create a new card, um, actually I'll, I'll edit a card. Um, I want to, oops, sorry y'all. Okay, let's click in. So there we go. You can add so many different things, power ups. I have not even gone into power ups, um, but there's all sorts of things you can do. Um, Luis, I don't know if at the beginning there was any discussion about um, integrations, but there are a number of integrations that are available. Um, but sometimes it's a little too much for me, too many options. And then the thing I don't like is that I haven't found a way to delete. I know you can archive, but I can't delete a card, mm -hmm. um, which I don't know, as I'm iterating and trying to figure out how I'm using the tool, I, I want to be able to delete things um, right. because I haven't figured it out. So what I probably should have done in retrospect is have my play board, right? My board where I try all the different things and I um, uh. just kind of mess with it. And then I have, the two or three boards that I'm really using um, to track that to contract work or whatever the other um, pieces are, website design and so on that I'm doing. But I do like that you can, you know, jump from board to board really easily. Yeah. Um, it's it's very user friendly. Um, do you have a do you have a paid account? I don't. That's the other thing. Since it's just me, I just have the the free version. Um, right, right, right. But I think were I to really get into the habit of gosh, even just for life at home, <laughs> go through items in breakfast room. I mean, you know, we're just trying to get rid of a bunch of yeah. stuff. Um, yeah. Even if I were to be able to do that, uh, use that more often, I probably would um, probably would pay for it. Yeah. So Rubina is saying um, you can delete. Let's see. Click archive. And then there's a delete at the bottom. And then also she's on the free version as well. And, and that's one thing that we should add probably about Trello is Trello just the free version is extremely powerful. But I think that what ends up happening is the more you start to rely on it, you know, the more data you start, you know, um, putting into it, then eventually you're like, yeah, I need to start paying for this because, right. you know, a lot of revolves, a lot of my life revolves around this. And the thing I think with Trello is if you are somebody that is naturally prone to sort of to-do list type of activity, like Liz's mom, um, like my <laughs> wife, you know, my wife uses, she uses the back of like junk mail envelopes. Yes, like that's what we daily. do in our house. <laughs> yeah, daily, just like she's got a list of like, you know, paint the house, you know, and you know, crazy stuff. But um, she, you know, so Trello would be really, really good for her if she's, you know, spent any um, any more time on the computer. But um, so I, I think if, if, if that's the case, then Trello is probably a tool you should look at. And then I kind of want to wrap things up, but I do want to answer, um, Rubina had posted a question in, in the questions and answer section. It's like, why do you think people are apprehensive um, to using Trello? And I think that if you aren't one of those to-do list types of people, it might be a little overwhelming to try to, you know, to, 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 to sort of wrap your head around how it works. It can be just like a little bit too much sometimes if you like, if your board is just too, um, if you've just got like information all over it, when you first look at it, you're like, okay, just what exactly happened here? There's just, you know, all these cards and stuff. And so, yeah, yeah. Inf information overload, like um, Rubina posted in chat. And so it can be, it can be a little daunting initially, but like for me, I know that when I first, when I was organizing um, the live events and using a Kanban style of, of format. It was really helpful to have daily schedules listed in that way. And then also just being able to track the progress of 
you know, whether or not we had the content in, whether or not the speaker was, you know, was, was ready and, and just that type of thing. So uh, super helpful for that. Yeah. Yeah. So thanks for sharing. And I wish, you know, I really wish that I could have had Kristen talk live on this because I know it seems like Kristen is probably like very Trello oriented, a power user. And then Mary and Heidi both are using it. So I'd love to, would love to hear more about um, how you use this tool. I'm a huge like nerd about stuff like this. And it's like, like I want to start a Trello board again, just, you know, because um, we, we had this broadcast today, but um, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and just wrap it up. You know, Liz, thanks for joining us. I really appreciate you coming in from Starbucks. Good to know that um, Starbucks Wi-Fi works with TL with, um, with Crowdcast. Yep, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and you guys, anybody who's left in, um, in chat or is listening to the uh, podcast, if you have a productivity tool that you'd like to come on and sort of talk about something that really helps you in your daily life, um, feel free to send me a message in Slack or email me at um, Luis at the TLDC.com and let's talk about it. I'm a huge nerd for this stuff. So I'd love to discuss, um, you know, what you're using. And with that, Monday, we've got another uh, episode in the LMS playlist. Again, Randy Redman is going to be talking about Blackboard and Canvas. Hopefully, we'll see you there. Also, we've got another couple um, broadcasts next week to Chris Syracuse and Darcy Goshorn or Goshorn. Gosh, I need to figure out his last name. Um, we're going to be doing member showcases for them. So um, hopefully, we'll see you guys next week. So thanks, everybody. Thanks again, Liz, Rubino, Randy. Um, have a great weekend. Take care, everybody.